Good afternoon, everyone. This is Heather Turner, and I am the District 53 Social Media Chair, and we're going to talk about fun Facebook club pages for Toastmasters today. Um, just a couple of quick housekeeping things before we start. We are recording this, and it will be available on the District 53 website, hopefully by early next week. And if you have questions, over to the right of your screen, there is a box, and you can either ask me questions in the right-hand side, and I'll try to address them near the end of the webinar, or there is actually a chat bar as well if you would like to chat. So I'm going to start with um, just basic setting up a club page. Now, some of you might already have club pages set up. And if you do, please bear with me. I'll try to go through this fairly quickly. But it is important because a lot of people do ask me the, the step process to actually go through this. Now, the one thing I do want to address before we start with that is that if you are going to use Facebook to advertise your club, you need to make sure that you advertise it. So you need to put it in any literature that you're putting out there. You need to put it in um, anything that you're adding for email signatures, for example, if you're using an email signature for the club. And if you're using a club website, whether it's Free Toast Toast 2 or any other type of website, I do highly encourage people to add social media links to it. Primarily because people do not go to Facebook and search for things specifically. So they will they don't know you have a Facebook page until you actually go there and tell them, hey, we have a Facebook page, for example. Now, the other thing that I do want you to pay attention to, and I kind of harp on this a lot on almost every webinar, is making sure that on the Toastmasters International website, your information is up to date. And um, your Toastmasters International information also gives you the option to add a Facebook link. So if you're going to be using Facebook for your Toastmasters marketing, I do very much encourage you to enter that link in there because people can get it from the map view and they can also get it from your own individual page on Toastmasters International itself. Now, how to get there. And when I gave this session, I gave a social media interview or <laughs> overview rather um, a few weeks ago to another district. One of the questions that we had from quite a few people was, well, I don't know how to get in there and edit that information. The first step to that is actually to go to Toastmasters International, go to Leadership Central and click on that tab and then Club Central. And when you go down here and go to Club Contact and Media Information, you can add that information in there. I do encourage while you're in there, make a note so that when you have officer changeover every year, you go in and you make that information up to date. So contact information, club meeting times, club locations, because a lot of times that one place, you know, the club websites and any other, you know, online media um, venues that Toastmasters clubs are using to advertise might keep up to date. But I find a lot of times on the Toastmasters International site, that information sort of neglects to be updated. So that's one thing that's very important to do because people go to Toastmasters International first generally to find a club. Now, when you're creating a page for the first time, and this is important to address, you do need a personal account on Facebook in order to create a page. Um, I call it a business page, but we also call it club pages, community pages. They used to be called fan pages. And you do need that personal account to create the page. If you are the VP of PR or whoever is in charge of the club marketing and you do not want to actually uh, participate on Facebook, have a presence on Facebook, but you still do want to operate and maintain a club page, you do need a personal profile. I know that's horrible to hear that, but if you are curious about this and you need help with it and you do want to create a personal account, I can show you how to lock it down so people can't touch you. I mean, <laughs> yeah, they can't touch you. They can't touch you online. They can't contact you. They can't find you, but you do still need that account in order to create that page itself. Now, there's two different ways that you can create a page itself. When you're logged in, so this is your personal feed of Facebook itself, you can go up here to this little arrow and go to Create Page. Or this is a fairly new option, and apparently this has not been rolled out to everybody. I was showing someone this actually just yesterday, and they did not have this. And I don't actually recall seeing it until fairly recently myself. Um, you can go up here if you see this create, and you can create a page here as well. 
Now, the first screen you're going to come to is you want to be a business or brand or a community or public figure. Most Toastmasters clubs register themselves and start a page as a community or public figure because we're not really a business. Toastmasters is a brand per se, but we are definitely community oriented, a nonprofit. So I do encourage you to put in get started as community figure. You can start as a business or brand and Honestly, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference one way or the other. The templates on the back ends of the Facebook pages themselves are pretty much the same. But I know historically Toastmasters clubs have used the community or public figure um, step to get on here. And I know that we have quite a few people logging in a bit late. I guess I'm not the only one that was a minute late starting up. Uh, for those that just joined us, we are recording this and it will be available on the District 53 website hopefully by next week. If you have questions as we go along, please ask them in the question bar to the right of your screen and I will try to answer them near the end of the webinar. Now the next step is you're going to uh, put in some information, so your page name and a category. And you can't just kind of write your own category. What you'll do is you'll actually type in something. So Social Club, for example, is one of the general ones that most Toastmasters Club pages get put under. And you can add more categories later. But it will give you a drop down of ones that you can pick. You can change your page name later, but I do encourage you to think about what you want to name it specifically first. When you change your name after the page has already been registered, it goes into page review and they don't necessarily always agree with you changing it. So sometimes they will not let you change it. And if you try to change it multiple times, Facebook will generally decline the change. Now, you can put your address in, so I would encourage you to put your meeting information address in. You don't have to put a phone number in. If you don't want to show an address, that is also optional. But if your club is meeting at a specific place all the time and it doesn't vary, I would encourage you to actually put the, the name and address of the club or the location that you meet at. Now, it's just really... Starting this out is super, super easy because it's going to walk you through every single step of setting this up. So it's going to ask you to upload a profile picture and upload a cover photo. You can skip those two and you can go back to those, but it's encouraging you to do those right away. If you need help and you want to create something custom for the cover photo, that's the big long photo at the top of the page. There is a great utility out there called canva.com. There is a free version and a paid version. You really only need the free version and it will let you create custom social media content. So posts for, for pages, um, cover photos, and for all different types of social media, it will help you create some profile pictures. So if you just didn't want to upload a photo, you wanted to put a little more creativity into that, um, you can use Canva to create something special for that one, but you don't have to. Now, after you've added, for example, and, and obviously this doesn't match because I used a logo from my Cromwell Community Toastmasters and a photo from there. But for the, the purpose of this kind of test setting, um, I uploaded an image that goes in the left. And you do want to keep in mind that there it is a round. So if you're uploading Toastmasters logo, for example, you do want to make sure that there's some white space around that so that the logo actually um, is centered in the middle or as best as it is able to be. Um, with this photograph itself, you do have the ability to, when you upload it, to move it up and down. So you can recenter it, for example. If it's a huge picture, you can actually move it back and forth a little bit. What I do encourage people to do is once they've set the page up, you're going to come to this. It's going to say, welcome to your new page, and it's going to say, see all page tips. It's going to walk you through some additional things. I'm going to go over most of them with screenshots tonight, but most people are only going to remember a little bit of this, even though it's going to be available for review. But if you want to run right out and start this up tonight, this would be the place that I would really encourage you to start is the page tips, because it will give you some more information about setting up and customize the page. The other place you're going to want to find pretty much everything is in the settings. This is the other place that you're going to want to spend a lot of time. Facebook changes things, I would say, several times, if not multiple times per month. Sometimes they're just little itty bitty changes. Sometimes they're fairly big ones. 
They don't frequently tell people when they've changed things. You might just actually happen to be editing something on the page or promoting a post on the page and say, hey, that looks different or they've moved something around. In the settings, you'll find occasionally they'll take something away, they'll move something, they'll change the name of it, uh, they'll make an addition here and there. The real best way to understand Facebook pages is just create this and play around in the back end of it. You really can't do any damage to the to the back end. Um, there is one little uh, text thing under here that says delete your page. And it will say, if you hit that by accident, it will say, are you really, really sure you want to do that? Um, so it's it, but everything else, I do encourage people go into the settings and actually go through every single tab and see what it does. I'm going to touch on the most important things for setting up your page, which are the ones circled on the left hand side. So when you click on page info, it's going to ask you to enter a description of the page. I do encourage you to try to fill out as much information at, on this as you can. So if you do have a phone number, um, if you do have a website, whether it's Free Toast Host or any other website that you're using or even a blog you might be using, I do encourage you to put that information in there. Um, the email address, I would put whatever email address that your club is using to be most contacted. I do encourage clubs to register a Gmail address so that all officers have access to it and that Gmail address can be used for setting up other social media accounts and it can be transferred to the new officer team. But if you have an address that you're using for email for contact, I'd put that in there. If your place has wireless, I would encourage you to put that in too. Um, the street address, and also things like in here, as you can see, here's the categories that we filled out in the beginning that said social club. Um, generally, people have been putting in for Facebook club pages, community organizations, events, social clubs. It's really up to you. There's some other options that I have seen on clubs, but that those three are the most typical. Um, you can only add up to three of them. Now, in terms of hours, this really is up to you. I do know that having always open isn't necessarily right, open on selected hours. So like, for example, when your club meetings are, is particularly helpful when someone is searching for things. And these additional details are, I would really encourage you to fill them out. They are not completely necessary, but things like the mission statement, maybe when it was founded, if you have any club awards, for example, if you've been, you know, select distinguished or president's distinguished or distinguished, you know, for X number of years, or, you know, you had a club member that, that got awards or won contests even, put that information in there because that helps flesh the page out. Now, the other tab I go to is templates and tabs. And this is something that you can change whenever you want to. By default, um, every community page is set with a standard template. And it's gonna have a lot of information that's, if you scroll down here, it's all of these things. So home, posts, reviews, videos, photos, et cetera, et cetera. Some of these you can click on and shut them on and off, not all of them. Why I wanna draw attention to this though, is you wanna make sure that these top three or four are the ones that you want people to be looking at when they first come to your Facebook page. And the nice thing about these is say reverse isn't that important, you can shut it off. But if say you did want a lot of people to leave reviews on the page, hey, we came to XXX Toastmasters Club, we had an awesome time and you're encouraging that, um, all you have to do is hover over this and click on it and then drag it up and down. So all of these things on your main page are all switchable. So you can all on this back end of the Facebook page, you can move the organization of all of these up and down. So does anybody have any quick questions before I keep going? Okay, there's a question in here about what other templates are available. Um, there are other ones, so like if you're a shop, for example, if you're more of a community organization, so you're a nonprofit and you're raising money, um, you can definitely go into the edit tab and go in here and just see what the different ones offer. But realistically, they're actually most of them offer the same things. For the hospitality ones, they actually, pretty much the only different one they actually offer is um, the ability to upload a menu. Some of them have a shopping tab that you can add to it. Okay, now this is very, very important. 
um, more than probably anything else about Facebook pages. And I've come across so many Toastmasters clubs in the last 11 years that have had somebody start a Facebook page for their club. The person left, you know, they retired, something else happened to them, and they have lost access to it. Now, when you're setting up a page or you have a page already for your club, you really need to go into the back end here. So settings and then page roles and have more than one person assigned as an administrator of this. I cannot stress the importance of this. Um, because again, say that person leaves, you know, they go to another country, they can't get hold of, they're gone for whatever reason, you can't then edit your club page at all. So that, and it's, that's especially hard when you change officers over, because if that person le leaves, they can't transfer ownership per se of the page to someone else. Now you do have five different options when you're adding someone as administrators, um, editors, moderators, advertisers, or analysts. Um, from a Facebook's perspective, Facebook's club's perspective, advertisers and analysts are something that you can pretty much ignore. Um, the administrator has full rights of the page. They can edit things, they can add things, they can delete things, they can delete the page. Um, editors basically have almost full control over the page, but they cannot assign a new administrator and they cannot assign anybody else to have a page role. Only administrators can have that. Um, moderators is something from a, a club perspective you probably don't really need to think about, but if you wanna get more people involved in getting used to using Facebook and getting used to the Facebook club page, that's definitely up to you. I know that most Facebook clubs generally use just administrators and when they have someone that's an administrator they'll have you know four or five different administrators for example and when one or two people leave or they transfer to another club it's very easy just to actually delete that person from the page role um, when you add someone as an administrator or any other option in the back end of this you need the email address that they have that they personally use to log into facebook you don't need their their password you just need the email address or you need to be connected to them so you need to be friends with them and in that case you can just type a name in so for example if you were adding me to your Facebook club page and I was a friend of yours on Facebook, you would just have to type in Heather Turner and my name would pop up. When you hit add, it will ask you for your Facebook password. That's your personal password. That's not any other password. And that information does not get stored in the page itself. That's only connected to your personal account. And that's from a business perspective. They wanna make sure that people aren't basically hacking uh, pages. So they wanna make sure that it's really you adding that information in there okay now the the one thing that i would say is um when you're an administrator the best way to really get more people liking the page is invite people and inviting friends is a great way to do that and you may not have all of your friends necessarily in, in, involved in toastmasters many of us many of our friends already are toastmasters but it helps spread the word it helps spread and up the like content of that and if you ever do decide to advertise on facebook so you're going to boost posts and we'll talk about that in a little while um it, it ups the ante, so to speak, and I'll address that in a minute. It is important though, anybody that's an administrator of the page, I do encourage people to invite as many friends as they can to like the page. And you know, it, the interesting thing is people see, hey, people have liked this page and people that are connected to them. When you invite friends and you're sharing some interesting content, for example, and you might be getting some of your friends to share that content, then some of their friends might see it. So encouraging them to like that is important. And there's a comment in here that says, what can you do if you have an old page that you're locked out of? Uh, <laughs> well, you can, see, I guess the question for, or the question for that question is, were you an administrator of that page or do you know anybody that was an administrator of that page? But if you were an administrator of the page beforehand and you were locked out of it, have you tried to contact Facebook? Um, if you were not administrator of it before, there's really nothing you can do. Um, if you have had a page developed by somebody and you cannot get hold of them, Facebook will not transfer that page to someone else. Um, 
the person has passed away. Okay, um, in that particular case, <laughs> you might be able to get access to it. You're gonna have to actually go through the really, really fun, not so fun um, trip of getting their death certificate. Um, and actually filling out about 15 pages of forms to Facebook, and it'll generally take a couple of months to maybe get it. I don't know whether that's worth it to you guys. In that case, I would suggest maybe just starting a new page. Um, it, it really, that's probably the one case that you can get a Facebook page transferred is, is if someone has passed away. But if it's someone that just has not been able to get hold of anymore, you really can't get into that. So I hope that, that answered that question. Now, that's from the administrator standpoint is asking friends, encourage your club members to like the page and encourage your club members to ask their friends to like the page. And they're going to see that in a different spot. For example, instead of up here in the three tabs, they're going to see it down here that says no friends who might like your page. And they will come up with a box that says invite your friends to like your page. And this is up to you. Um, I've actually found that if I'm inviting people to like a page and you really want them to like it, this is just the generic text that pops up when you invite people. Um, write something else in here. You've got quite a few characters to write something more interesting. Um, push that push that out. And when you, when you friend new friends, so to speak, make sure you go back there and invite, you know, keep inviting more people to like the page. Not everybody's gonna do that. But the more people that you can, the, the better it is for your page itself. Now, one of the other places to um, fill out information is over at the right hand side. This is in your about section. And when you log in, there's not going to be anything here. This is going to be a blank spot. There's not going to be any text in here. But if you click on see more, it's actually going to bring up a blank spot and it'll say add photo. And you can add quite a bit of text into here. Um, this is actually just a good extra catch. It's a good extra way to keep text right in front of people when they're coming to Facebook for the first time. So I'll actually go back to that for a second. So if I'm coming to your Facebook page for the first time, so I was on your free Toast Host site and I said, hey, I'm a Facebook person. I'm going to go check out your Facebook page because I'm the kind of person that, that does that and so do a lot of other people. I will say, hey, this is interesting. And I might see, this is, I'm not going to see this, um, not logged in as administrator, but I might see your recent post and I'll say, hey, this looks interesting. There's more happy, shiny people and here's some information about what the club is. Um, this is important to address. Um, this information, if I was viewing this page as a guest and not administrator, I would not see the information in here. Only people that administrators and other um, page administrators, so other page types, have access to this and see this information in here. So go past that. Okay. Now you do have the ability to also do things called pinning to the top of the page. So you can write a Facebook post and then you can pin it to the top. So say you have an open house going on and maybe you actually put a lot of information on your Facebook page. You post once a week, you post a couple times a week maybe, and you want to really push your open house. You have to use your Facebook page very much so from two perspectives. Is one, you want to get engagement from people that have already liked your page, but you want engagement from people that are coming to your page for the first time. So if there's something that you really wanted to promote, on the three dots of every post you put in, you're going to see something that says pin to top. And you can unpin this at any point. It used to be that pin posts only stayed at the top of the page for a week and then they dropped down again. That was done away with about two years ago. So now what's happened is people are pinning posts and they forget they've pinned the post. And what happens from the perspective of a guest coming to it from the very first time is you might be posting frequently, but if I'm looking at this and it's maybe November of this year and the very first thing I see on the top part is February, I think, wow, they really haven't posted in a while. Unless you're another page administrator from a business and you know what this pin means, that doesn't it, it doesn't mean anything to you. So just be cognizant of the fact that if you're using that sort of tech tip to pin information to the top of your page, you need to make sure that it gets refreshed and it doesn't stay there for a long time. I hope that made sense to everybody. Okay. 
Now, the other thing to look at is if you are going to use your Facebook page a lot, you need to pay attention to something called insights. And insights are at the top of your page and try to review them at least once a month. And this is important because what it'll say and obviously this is not from um, insights from a Toastmasters, but it's a good example. Um, it'll give you when the post was published and the time it was published. This is information to keep track of because if you build a page that has a lot of engagement and you really wanna fine tune when you wanna post, you need to find out what time is the best time for you to post and what day. And this information will give you all of the information since you've started your page and it's exportable into uh, an Excel spreadsheet so you can sort it. And that's important because you can say, okay, this particular text on a post had a lot of reach or it had a lot of engagement or, you know, posts uh, posted a Tuesday at 10 a.m., for example, I consistently got a lot of feedback and got a lot of engagement and a lot of likes and comments. That information is really important to look at. There's a lot of information and insights. I could actually go through that for about half an hour and bore you guys to death. Um, but the best thing to do is actually just touch on this so that when you started your page or you have a page, poke around in that. That'll get you a lot of good information. Um, the other information, it'll tell you when your fans are online. And this is important in terms of, um, it's usually pretty consistent. It gives you from a recent one week period. But what I've done is I've actually tracked this information for months at a time over a whole bunch of different business pages. And this data for when the people that have liked your page is actually really consistent. So you might see, for example, that your peak time to post is at 10 a.m., for example, or at about 8 p.m. Posting in the evening um, generally is a little bit better, but there's a lot more people on, so they may not see your posts. It's kind of a catch-22 with that one. Now, the other thing that I found extremely helpful in order to get ahead if you're going to use a Facebook page is pre-scheduling posts and using posts as drafts. Because realistically, one of the problems with being the VP of PR, especially in a Toastmasters club, is we are volunteers. And unfortunately, some of the stuff can be a bit time consuming, but it can be really time consuming if we wait till the end of the month or we wait till the end of a quarter and we say, gosh, there's all of the stuff that we should have been putting out there, um, you know, but I haven't had time, I haven't been able to get to it, and it, it's overwhelming at that point. Realistically, the best way to use these tools and Facebook and most of the other uh, social media channels out there have scheduling tools that you can use. Facebook has a really good internal one. So if you're just going to use Facebook itself for your club, I do encourage people to use this feature. Um, and it's it's in different spots on different pages. Um, on one of the pages, I'm the administrator, it actually says publishing tools right at the top. On this particular page, it's in the drop down of publishing tools itself. And so if you just click on that publishing tools, you're going to come to this back end. And it's important to, again, try to get ahead of what you're doing. So even if you're not going to post other things, you're only going to post things like, hey, come to our club meeting next week. You know, put in a Microsoft Word document or Notepad or whoever you use for word processing. Just write all those dates up. You know, write something catchy up. Maybe find some nice photos of the club or use some of the photos that Toastmasters International has provided with us. They have some really good stock photos available on the Toastmasters website itself. And, you know, basically schedule, you know, 10 minutes every couple of weeks and sit down and just pre-schedule information in there. It's really easy to do. It's just like publishing something in a Facebook post, but you're actually scheduling it to post at a certain time. Once you start getting ahead of that information, it's so much easier to maintain this information. And once you schedule things, you can go in and you can edit them. So say you had a meeting get canceled because of snow or it got rescheduled or the meeting got moved. Even once it's scheduled, all you have to do is click on it and then you can edit it, you can reschedule it, you can delete it. So once it's been posted in, in the scheduling option, it is not set in stone. It used to be many years ago, but they've changed it. So it's actually a lot more user friendly. What I like to do too is just get ahead of it in drafts, but I'll touch on that more in a minute. Now in scheduled posts, you're going to see something up here that says create. 
and it's going to pop up with a box. You're going to add your information. If it's from an external source, sometimes or most usually it will pull in a photo and then you'll just hit schedule and then it will give you a publication date and you can pretty much schedule things out until pretty much next year. <laughs> so, you know, get ahead of yourself as much as you can. Um, obviously, if you're the VP of PR, maybe you wanna schedule things into July to help your incoming VPR out a little bit, but try to get ahead of that information as much as you can. Now, putting things in drafts is just as useful too, because scheduling takes a little bit longer. I found if you come across articles in your reading, you know, Toastmasters Magazine came out with something that you saw in another forum. Um, you know, they came out with a newsletter that you clicked on the link and opened it up in your browser. You saw a YouTube video that would be fantastic to pull in into your Facebook post. Um, just go into the graphs and do it the same way you're gonna schedule it without that actual step of putting in a time and just put it into drafts folder. What you can do, once all your drafts are in here, you can go in here at any time and you can either publish them right away or then you can set them into scheduling. Once you use those two kind of backend helpers of Facebook, that really helps get, a lot of, get, get ahead of your time quite a bit. Now, one of the questions that I get a lot when I talk about social media, especially Facebook, is whether ads are worth it and whether boosting posts are worth it. I honestly don't like ads, especially for Toastmasters clubs. We usually have very small budgets, not a lot of uh, money in the kitties itself. Um, it can be worth it to boost posts, especially if you have something going on like an open house and you do wanna attract members. Um, what I found specifically for Toastmasters clubs is you have some options in here. You have people you choose through targeting, people who like your page, which seems kind of silly because if you've got you know 150 people who have already liked your page, why should you need to um, show them that again in order, and pay for it? But that is one of the options. That's a whole other conversation in itself. And then uh, people who like your page and their friends and people in your local area. The best results I have found for Toastmasters and business too is people who like your page and their friends. And then you can do a little bit of geographic targeting. So if you're in New York State, for example, put New York. Um, if you're in New York, for example, put New York. If you're on the border somewhere, you might wanna put two states. Um, people who like choose through targeting, I honestly am not a big fan of. Every time I've seen a boosted post, and I'm the administrator of over 100 business pages, so I actually watch what what kind of what goes on and I document stuff. And people you choose through targeting um, doesn't necessarily pull in specific information. Uh, Facebook doesn't pull information just from Facebook. So it's not saying, okay, you know, these people live in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and they're female, and maybe they're around 35 if they put their birth date in, and they like dogs, or they're college educated. It pulls in information for partner networks. And so the results you get from targeting aren't always as specific as you'd want. And especially for people like Toastmasters clubs using limited budgets, using through targeting is tough because you might get, you might get, you know, I would say 30 to 40% of the people you've targeted are spot on. The rest of those, if you start getting likes and shares and maybe not shares, but likes and comments, look at the profiles of those people and you're going to get people from Brazil and, you know, not your target market when you put those in there. So I would recommend if you're going to boost posts, definitely play with this a little bit. Um, set limited budgets, you can always stop it, you can edit it, but people who like your page and their friends generally have the greatest reach. And I think the reason for this is most people don't friend fake accounts. I mean, even though there's, like they're saying now, 30% of Facebook accounts out there are fake um, and people do get sucked into friending fake ones occasionally, most people friend and have friends that are real people. Quite a few of them geographically are fairly close to those people. And most, of, I would say the average, Facebook person has between 300 and 500 friends. So if your page has 150 people that, that like it, you know, times that number of friends, so you've got thousands of people potentially seeing the post and it'll actually tell you the number in there that it will, that will kind of shoot out to it. Now, the other thing about pages 
is it has the ability to pull in some external applications. So if you have a YouTube page, if you have Instagram, if for whatever reason you're using Pinterest, which can be fun for um, Toastmasters, you're using a Twitter account, um, there's a great application out there called Woobox. It's W-O-O-B-O-X. It's my personal favorite. Again, there's a free version and a paid version. All we need, because what we're looking for is something called static tabs, is the free version. And there are other applications out there that do this. Um, Woobox is one I know for a fact that's safe. There are some other applications that will bring in tabs to pages themselves. Not all of them are safe and they can actually hack your personal account. So I'd be very careful about adding access to anything that you're not completely sure of. Um, the neat thing about these extra applications though, like in this, this particular case, you can add a YouTube tab to your page and it's gonna bring in the content from your Toastmasters YouTube channel. And this is actually kind of neat on the YouTube channel because it gives you specifically which video that you want to highlight. It doesn't bring in the last one. It brings in the last video that you say you want it to post in there. Okay. Now, one of the other questions that I get about Facebook is what kind of content should we be posting? Well, obviously, why we want to be, you know, nice to others, but we want to try to be informative, helpful, educational. So posting things that will be beneficial to people reading our page. Um, one of my personal favorites, and I think every time I go on a webinar, I mention this guy, um, Dan Rockwell is probably one of my favorite bloggers. And most of his posts are really, really great. So I like to personally share his posts on some of the social media pages that I maintain for Toastmasters. Um, but, you know, thanking other people, just posting other information that's out there. What we're doing with social media, social media is social. So think about using it socially, so to speak. And what we're not doing is we're not taking information from others, we're repurposing it. So we're pointing out great information and we're attributing it to other people. So in this particular case, um, Dan Rockwell, we're bringing the, the uh, title of his blog post in, and then we're pointing the way so people can actually go to his blog and read it itself. You know, if you wanna get, um, put a little more time into it, add some comments in there and say, hey, this is a reason that I really, really like this blog post. You know, to get more interaction with those, you know, post them on your club pages and then share them onto your personal profile. You're continuing to brand your club because when you share it onto a personal profile, this name, your Toastmasters Club is going to get shared to your personal profile and friends and additional friends are going to see that. Maybe another friend is going to share that on her personal profile. This is one thing that you can do to kind of up the game in, in Facebook is when you're having your club members like the page, encourage them to share the posts on their personal timelines. It helps spread the word about Toastmasters and helps spread your personal branding about your club. You know, posting information and photos about club contest winners, posting videos, for example, is a great way to have extra content. You do want to make sure when you're posting pictures that you have permission from people in your Toastmasters club to post them. Most people are okay with that. Um, I know that in my clubs, we actually have a written form asking people for basically for photo model release permission. Not every club does this, but I'd really encourage people to ask first. I know that some people just don't want to be out there publicly. Some people join Toastmasters and they might have some personal things going on that they just don't want their image to be out there or their name. So please do ask pe people first before you post that. Now in terms of finding content, that's always a big one. How do you find content for what to post? Well, one of my favorite places to go is a place called Paperly, and the link up here is the top. And basically, this is a newspaper, and there's many of them. There's many Toastmasters newspapers, if you want to call them that that are curating content from out there and bringing them in. And you can either go to that page or you can get an email newsletter every day with those links. It's a great way to curate content specifically about public speaking. Um, there's not just Toastmasters ones, there's public speaking ones. It's free to use, it's free to create a paperly, which is basically just curating content from around the web and bringing it in. So, you know, don't have to go out there and search for it, let the information come into you basically. 
Now, what I like too is if you have some blogs out there that you read a lot that are maybe great public speaking, great leadership blogs, but you don't want to clutter your email up because it seems like everybody these days has too much email, is you can start what's called an RSS reader. And there's lots and lots of RSS readers out there. My personal favorite one is called Feedly, F-E-E-D-L-Y.com. It's free. And you can set it up. And basically what it does is you give it the uh, web addresses of the blogs. And anytime there's a new blog published, it pulls this into one centralized um, location. So you can just log into Feedly and cherry pick out any of the articles or any of the blog posts that you find are interesting to repost on your social media channels. Now, this is something that I've started um, I'm going to actually share this in the chat bar. People are more than free to use any of the links in here. I do try to add to it occasionally. I've been a little bad recently because I haven't had time. But there's about 11 pages of blog and article posts that I've accumulated that make some great social media content. So if you're just starting out, for example, um, this is feel free to, to snag some of these. Um, you can subscribe to Speaking Tweets, which is one of the Toastmasters ones that I had set up for my own club many years ago, or you can create your own. Um, but what I'd encourage is sort of like getting ahead on scheduling posts and putting things in drafts is start in, this is like Google Docs, for example, so it's online. Start in Google Docs or Notepad or Microsoft Word or again, you know, any venue that you use for publishing. Any time that you come across content, maybe you don't want to log into Facebook all the time, but start curating this content. Start getting the content together ahead of itself and just post it somewhere so you can refer back to it. Um, from my perspective, this is one of the ways that like if I know that I've posted something in here, I color code it. So I know that I've already plugged that in. I mean, in Facebook, you can refresh things. So if you've posted a blog, that's a really good one, for example, six months ago, feel free to use it six months later, or even four months later. Um, I do try to recycle the really good ones, but it does give you a way just to keep on top of, you know, which ones have been posted or you, if you have a couple of different people posting information, they know which ones have been posted. Or if you're transferring that information over to a new VPR in Officer Changeover, that gives them a hard start too. Okay, and I'm gonna pop out of here for a sec and go over to here. And I'm going to put this in your chat bar. And please ask any questions that you might have of Facebook. And I can't promise that I will know all of them, but I will try to help you out as much as I can with any uh, that you might have questions about. OK, and I have there's a couple of people that have their hand raised, but they have not asked any questions. So the people that have raised their hands, if they have questions, could they please type them in the question bar or in the chat bar to the right? That would be very much appreciated. OK, and the next question I'm getting in here is, does it cost any money to have a Facebook business page slash club page? No, it does not. <laughs> Um, you do have to pay for boosted posts. Um, you do have to pay for Facebook advertising, but you do not have to pay for a Facebook page. Um, I know that that this comes up every year or so where the rumor mill goes around that Facebook is going to start charging for Facebook pages. And I really doubt that's going to happen because from a small business perspective, they're going to shoot themselves in the foot doing that. Okay, and the next question was, what was the name of the first free software, um, something like Canva? Oh, it's Canva, C-A-N-V-A dot com. And if people are looking for um, free photo editors, I'm happy to share a list. Um, I can certainly share a list out of some of the social media tools that I use that might help too. If you're using some of the other social media channels and you want to get ahead of um, pre-publishing to some of them. There's two applications that I really recommend checking out, um, free versions and paid versions. All Toastmasters need are the free versions, is Hootsuite, which some people might have heard of, and BufferApp.com. I personally prefer BufferApp because you can, it's a, it's a lot simpler interface um, 
and yes, I can. <laughs> the question is, can you share your presentation? And I would be more than happy to share my presentation. Um, I will put it into whatever format you like, PDF, or I will. I can keep it as a PowerPoint. So I'd be happy to share that with you. Um, I'd be happy to share it with anybody that wants it. If you have additional questions that you've thought about after the fact, please let me know. The email address that you registered with, the District 53 Toastmasters at Gmail, does come to me. So if you have specific questions or you run into something, for example, that you don't know what it is, uh, you're curious about what it does, please feel free to reach out and email me. I am more than happy to help. Okay. Um, yes, and one of the other questions I'm getting is, what are some of the names of some of the other uh, photo editing software that I use online? So I personally have Photoshop on my computer that I love and I use all the time. Photoshop actually has a free tool online. You have to use um, Flash. So if you don't have Flash um, in your browser, you're going to have to enable it. Um, but just Google uh, free Photoshop tools and you'll actually come to a, a really kind of simplified online version of Photoshop that's really easy to use. Um, my personal favorite one, though, I would say online is called Pixlr. It's P-I-X-L-R. And they've just came out with a new one called Pixlr X, which is really, really cool. It gives you a lot of bells and whistles and is really, really easy to use. Both of those are great for photo editing. And I will happily share PowerPoints and I will happily share the additional worksheet that I have for marketing. Um, again, if you have any extra questions, please ask them now. Otherwise, we're going to wrap it up. And please feel free to reach out to me afterwards. I would be more than happy to help with any questions. All right, everybody, thank you so much for attending. I hope you guys can all go off and have a lovely rest of your evening and a wonderful weekend. Oh, and we do have some question. Please examples, please explain some examples of Facebook advertising. Would a club have use for this? Um, well, besides advertising for an open house or maybe you were having um, a speaker series, for example, you know, or you were having a club contest and you wanted to get some community people involved in it. I do know that there's some clubs that have run like youth leadership programs that might have done some advertising. Um, some examples specifically, I don't know if you're looking for more of an example just by those. And if you are, if you would please explain, that would be much appreciated. Oh, okay. <laughs> and one more question additionally. Um, someone asked that they used to have a business page on Facebook and Facebook limited what you could put in the header image. Um, yes, they did do that. Facebook kind of cracked down quite a few years ago on limiting the amount of text that you could put in that big banner image at the top. Um, they actually don't do that anymore. So that's why I encourage people to go onto Canva or any of these other um, photo editing tools and you know, play around with those. Use those as an advertising space because you really want to use that top image to capture people um, coming in to seeing the page for the first time. So thank you so much for that question. Okay. All right, everybody. It looks like that is it for questions. Have a great evening, everybody. I do appreciate you taking your time out tonight. Bye-bye.